Hey, Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja, and today we got a special video. We're actually going to take a look at a crawl space that was $25,000 to encapsulate by one of our competitors and how the homeowner called us out and decided to have us redo everything. Stay tuned. Okay, now as you can see, before we even get into the crawl space, they used a reinforced vapor barrier. So what does that tell you we might run into while we're down there? Plus, the fact that it's a clear vapor barrier means that you can see everything under it. So why don't you come on in with us and let's take a look and see what we can find. show you the door real quick we got air intrusion here um, light and coming in and all that and uh, across the top as well you can actually see outside one of the things I wanted to point out was is that they put this here I guess that was their fix for the air intrusion uh, to me this is just nerve-wracking trying to climb in here and this thing's attacking you as you come into the crawl space I'm not sure why this was here but it also wasn't attached very well so you know, all the, the moisture is evaporating right here. It's just, uh, this is where five or six pieces of plastic came together. And this should be one of the nicer areas uh, that you pay a special attention to whenever you encapsulate and attach all this to the door framing because uh, this is the most trafficked area of your crawl space. So if you don't uh, treat this area really good, it's going to get like this over the years. So you want to make sure you attach all the plastic and everything to the door framing really well. Okay, so let's start with the sump pump. As you can see here, they had put in what appears to be a jackal uh, basin, and uh, it looks like I can see from here it's a, a third horsepower performance brand sump pump. Here's the uh, check valve that they installed, but just look at how distraught everything is. Um, they didn't use any of the gaskets to seal anything up. This wire is actually supposed to go through here. That's what this is for, is to make sure that's done. And the other thing I want you to notice the pump does not have a way for the plastic. If there's ever a flood from above, the water can't really get into there until the water is pretty high. Um, plus, it's not really at ground level. Uh, maintenance is going to be a little difficult with how this was installed. Um, you just got to kind of raise all this up. You can see it's got a Liberty pump, which is a great pump in it, but um, there's no water in there, which is great but we would have probably done the pump a little differently. Uh, we would have brought the uh, plastic together and uh, brought it in. And, and uh, so that way, if, if you get a flood from above, it rides onto the plastic into the, into the pump. The other thing is, uh, this is probably very noticeable to me, is that the plastic, and I'm gonna be tearing this plastic apart as we go along, but it's just very distraught it's uh they they used adhesives to seal it together so they missed a lot of spots here uh they didn't even uh put it fully underneath the ductwork. i understand uh sometimes you you have a hard time doing that but it wouldn't be difficult to get it underneath this ductwork because it does have room to do so they also used adhesives on the walls as you can see right up here uh so eventually adhesives will fail and uh, instead of it being mechanically attached, they just uh, use probably a polyurethane caulk on all of this. And look at this vent. It's not even uh, sealed around the vent here or anything. Uh, they just like shoved foam board in. It's probably about an R, R3 or an R5, which isn't a very good foam board. Plus it's, it's a, an EPS foam board, which means it doesn't have any termite resistant capabilities or anything like that. So this is a, uh, $25,000 uh, crawl space job and just in this one spot I was able to find quite a few mistakes. Okay so they installed a uh, Santa Fe Advanced Stu dehumidifier. Um, we, uh, we've we used these in the past. We decided to go with the April Air model for a few different reasons but it's it's a, an effective dehu and it's properly maintained and all that sort of thing. But one of the things, I don't know if you can tell, but this is where the air blows out of the DHU. There's the intake. Um, and the air is blowing directly at that wall. And then it also has an output over here and it's blowing into that HVAC system. 
So it's not really giving this dehumidifier the proper space it needs uh, to control a 3,000 square foot crawl space. I mean, we are, the door is right behind me. Uh, I understand you want to position the dehumidifier where you can get to it and maintenance it, uh, but at the same time, it should have been put more uh, back, more towards the back, so that the air could move better. There's no active ventilation system in here, so there's no soil gases being removed, which also helps to distribute the dry air throughout the crawl space. So basically, it's just getting really dry in this spot, and then the dehu will shut off. And... Uh, because the, the dry air doesn't have a chance to move to the rest of the crawl space. They also didn't attach the, uh, the condensate pump properly. This is actually supposed to be mounted on the dehumidifier. And the, so the de in order to do that, you got to get this guy a little bit higher off the ground. Uh, basically, one cinder block high should be high enough. But this is just loose. So if somebody goes crawling through, they could knock it out of the way. Uh, so And this is it. This is your, your traffic. To the rest of the crawl space you can't even go that direction because there's ducks all back there so you've got to go here so they they really put it in an inconvenient spot i know that it hadn't been maintenanced in over three years this job was done three years ago um, i know it hadn't been maintenance because the uh, homeowner said they hadn't had any maintenance done and uh, we had shown them a lot of zooglia built up in the drainage line and stuff like that uh, so it's very uh, good dehumidifier but it's in a really bad spot here is another vent that was uh, sealed up. Uh, again, not a, not a very good air seal. So as the dehumidifier runs, it's going to allow a lot of uh, outside humidity into the crawl space. And then we've uh, also, again, got a very, very bad plastic job. As you can see, here's where the seams are coming together. Um, everything is just not, not really done to our standards. I mean, is it effective? Yes, but with the uh, the polyurethane, it's going to eventually fail. Uh, you know, I can actually see a, a centipede climbing behind it. And again, what kind of vapor barrier is it? It's a reinforced. Uh, as all of this gets wet and damaged, um, it can uh, potentially give off a cat urine odor. Uh, and it's clear. I just don't, I don't like the clear. There's no ventilation system in here to move the air or to get rid of the soil gases or anything. And it kind of smells like dog poop in here, to be quite honest with you. Um, uh, I couldn't describe it at first, but Kayla was telling me she thought it kind of smelled like that too. And it does. It stinks in here. I uh, remember soil gases will build up if you encapsulate a crawl space without proper ventilation. When I came in here to do the uh, initial inspection with the homeowner, um, I, I just noticed things like this. You've got these gaps that, that you got all this exposed earth and um it's it's just this this is overlapping it should be a minimum of 12 inches do you see how close these are together uh it's if you're going to use a clear vapor barrier you need to make sure you use uh, extra precaution to overlap it appropriately because people can actually see the overlaps uh then you got this it's not even taped or or they didn't even put any caulk or anything here so you got these areas that are exposed then look at this you got these two pipes that is part of the water uh, management system running together and uh, they're not connected. So, uh, and here's something else. It's above the ground. It's above the ground. Can you believe that? They just laid it on the ground. I mean, ha it's below the ground over there and it's above the ground over here. I mean, I'm not a scientist, but I'm pretty sure water can't run uphill. So what's the point in just laying a, a trench with no sock? There's no way of protecting it. There's no sock on it. It is perforated, so that's good. At least they didn't use a solid pipe. It does have perforations to allow water in, but all this mud, since there's no sock and no aggregate, uh, all this mud, look at that, just clogged it. There's nowhere for that. This, this thing's clogged. There's, you know, it's $25,000, folks. This is what people are spending their money on. And because the homeowners weren't in a position to uh, get down here and check the project, this is what they wound up with. If you're going to do something, you got to do it right. Uh, then we pan over here at this, uh, this pillar. Uh, you can see all the moisture building up behind the pillar. 
All right, see the condensation building up behind? Uh, so all that stuff's evaporating. All right, and again, they didn't, they didn't wrap these properly. They didn't tape it. Uh, so moisture is coming from probably underneath the plastic rising up. Uh, so, you know, they, they did glue it here, but as far as I can tell, look at that. See, it's already starting to fall. Look at this. I mean, you, th this, the adhesive, I can stick my finger in there. They either, it's already given way or, or, uh, they just didn't put the right amount of caulk on it. Um, so anyway, there's a, there's a lot of issues in this crawl space. Uh, it's just, it's pathetic. So you got to have a sock around the around the uh the uh, trench you, you got to put it underground it, it just has to happen all right take a take a look up here okay um keep in mind i don't know if they did any mold remediation or not but uh there's what appears to be mold and the insulation whenever i pulled moisture meters on this uh on all of this wood uh it was in the high teens like 17 18 percent uh, so the insulation holds moisture, even though there's a dehumidifier, uh, because the dehumidifier can't really, uh, push that dry air where it needs to be. So insulation's holding moisture. Um, we've got mold present on an encapsulation that was, uh, paid for and done by professionals. Uh, then you, again, you got another, uh, column here with exposure to, to earth, uh, not wrapped and taped properly. Uh, and I've got another space of mold that, that I'm going to show you here in just a second, but, uh, you can even see, um, just see the darkness, see how the wood's discolored. You got a little bit of white. That's all mold too. You see all that on the joists. Um, just because it's not growing mushrooms doesn't mean it's not mold. I mean, there's, there's quite a bit. I don't know if you can see that raised stuff up off the joist or not, but, um, you know, there, there's quite a bit of issues that could have been handled properly. Um, and they just chose not to. Here's another spot where you can see the trench above the ground. It goes all the way around the corner. Who knows if they even joined that corner or not. Uh, they could have another uh, break in the pipe right through there, but you, if you follow all the way around both sides, the trench is above the ground. So uh, it doesn't really do a whole lot of good if it's above the ground. So um, again, more more vapor barrier moisture so you can see there's water underneath which is fine i mean that's one of the questions we <clears throat> we always get is should i have water underneath my plastic and this kind of shows you right here i don't know if you can see all this condensation underneath the plastic uh you're going to have water under the plastic now what you don't want is you don't want the plastic to become a water bed um, we've not had rain in about a week but uh you know the soil evaporates moisture just naturally so you're always going to have some kind of uh, uh, water under the plastic, but that's why you want to overlap and tape everything really good to make sure this doesn't evaporate out into the air. And some of it will. It's difficult to keep moisture out, uh, keep moisture from evaporating into the crawl space, no matter how good the vapor barrier was installed, which is why you have the dehumidifier. And it's not been on since we've been here. So I don't know if maybe that uh, one pocket over there is really dry, but, um, it's not ran at all since we've been here. Just another pillar, not properly wrapped, exposing the soil and all that kind of thing. But, um, I tell you the biggest problem in this little spot is right here. Look at all of that. It looks like somebody's vascular system. I mean, look, I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera, but all that is, uh, some kind of wood rot fungus that's taken hold and I believe it was even getting on the block. Look how it's made its way to growing on the block itself, uh, which is unusual. I, I, it's not very often you see something like that, but um, this wasn't addressed properly. This is obviously a main girder of the house, a main beam here, and uh, this should have been taken care of a little better. It even goes all the way over to this side and then to this main joist. And there's a lot more of this, but uh, just, just a very, uh, poorly done encapsulation. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you, you know, professionals should always make sure they clean up after themselves. And if you uh, take a look back there in that corner, um, all of that foam board, uh, now that's the furthest 
spot from the door. So, you know, a lot of times people think, oh, well, the homeowner will never go back in this spot. So I'm just going to put some trash back there. And uh, that's exactly what they did. There's wiring and looks like a pencil, uh, the foam board and just a bunch of stuff back in this back corner. I don't know if you can see that, that I can see dirt right there and that seam that's popped up. Um, then you got another hole in there in that area. You got pretty muddy right through there, which is why they had the uh, water management system installed in the first place. Look what's underneath though. Uh, it looks like they may have left the vapor barrier behind, uh, the old vapor barrier. So, uh, you know, sometimes you can't get the plastic out, but if you can remove the old plastic, you certainly want to do that because it can, uh, uh, create odors, believe it or not. That trap plastic can hide organic material like uh, wood and different things. Um, so anyway, I mean, I'm not trying to beat up on anybody. I'm just trying to say, if you're going to pay your hard-earned money to get your, your crawl space encapsulated correctly, uh, you may want to make sure you take a look at it after the job's done. I mean, you'd never get your kitchen remodeled and uh, not go in there to make sure it was done properly. So whether, if you can't get in your crawl space, if you're uh, maybe uh, uh, have a real tight crawl space that you can't get into, or you're older and uh, you can't, can't crawl in there yourself, or, or even younger and you can't crawl in there yourself, have them shoot a video uh, of the whole crawl space. Just take their, their phone and just have them do a video, just crawl around so at least you see what all was done. It's as simple as that to make sure your contractor does the crawl space correctly. So I am Michael Church with Crawl Space Ninja. And you know what? We're going to fix this crawl space. We're going to do it right. And then we're going to do another video later and show you what it's supposed to look like. So stay tuned.